All right, we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, giving signs with Brian Butterfield, the Red Sox third base coach. And you know what? We just go to Fenway Park or any ballpark. You see a whole number of signs that he be, can be given. They look very, very confusing, but quite frankly, they're simple. Now, we're not going to give you the Red Sox signs. We're going to make some dummy signs up to try to give you an example of how things are run at third base. So let's start basically, Butter, with something very basic, a bunt, a hit and run, and a steal. Okay. And we'll use a hot hand. Why okay. don't we use your right hand as a hot hand? Beautiful. So to set this up, if you're looking for a sign from Butter, if you're a hitter or a base runner, basically you can eliminate the rest of his body with the exception of his right hand because that's where the sign's going to come from. Okay. Let's okay? go with an indicator too, Jerry. Okay. Let's go, okay. We'll go the, the right hand so you can concentrate on the right hand and we'll use the nose as the indicator. So if he does that, you, automatically he's using the hand that's hot and he's going to indicate it, which means there's going to be a sign coming up. Exactly. And let's let's use a sign. Let's use a couple signs that come immediately after the indicator. So you concentrate on the right hand. Once you see indicator, the first sign after. Let's use the belt as the bunt. B for belt. Right hand to the shirt is steal. And right hand to the hat is hit and run. Okay. Hat hit and run. Shirt steal begins with the same thing. Bunt is belt. Okay. Okay. So now you, you're trained. Now we're just telling our guys. If our hot hand is the right hand, you're, you're just looking for that right hand to see me go to the indicator first, which is the nose. There it is, right here. We go right here to the B, following it, and you know that the bun is on. Now, sometimes a third base coach, especially me, will screw up, so i got to have usually a takeoff. If I find myself going to a sign, let's say I go indicator, John Farrell wants to put on a hit and run, but I go belt by accident, I just slow down and I give a wipe off across saying, let's start over. Let's start over. So now he stays with me. Here, here. I almost went to the shirt. That was the hit and run. Hit and run. And now this is the release, which releases the hitter and the runner from me. So they keep their eyes on me until the release. Okay. That, I mean, that, that's pretty basic. And, and, but you'll see in the game that he obviously does things much quicker. But if you focus in on what he's doing, and you just remember one hand is hot, this is the indicator. So the sign is coming after the indicator, and then he also has a wipe off where he can give the sign. He can give a number of signs. Basically, this was the, what the hit and run butter. Yes. The hit and run. Yes. And then he can wipe it off by doing this, right? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. The hit and run it would be the hat and the shirt the is hit the and steal, run. and the bunt is the belt. Okay. So that so let's go through a steal. Let's just okay. let's go through a normal steal. Okay. Key is that, keep your eyes trained on the on my hot hand. Okay. Now my hand, hot hand is working. Here. Here. Here, here, release. We went to the shirt following the indicator. We went right to here, so that is shirt, steal. Pretty simple right there. It can't get much simpler than that, but it looks much more complicated in the game. Now, when we talk about uh, hitters and base runners, okay, I've always been of the, the mind that you really should know the situation in the game and never really miss a sign. Because if you're at first base, you're looking for two things, possibly, right? The bunt of the hit and run. That's right. And the, or the steal. You're looking for That's that, right. too. But if there's a, you know, it's a bunt situation, you're looking for the possible bunt. If it's a steal situation, if you're milking bets, you're looking for the steal. So, I mean, it's really hard to miss these signs, but players miss them all the time. That's right. And, you know, and that's the one thing that we talk about during spring training is play the game and know who you are. If you're, you know, when David Ortiz is hitting, uh, we're not going to, we're not going right. to ever hit and run with David. Right. Uh, and what we do is we'll have a, a verbal to our runner at first base if John Farrell wants a little action from that runner at first base. But guys knowing who they are and understanding who the other guys on the team are, we know that we have some guys that are potential hit and run candidates. So now you're alert to that. You're alert to that. Uh, my hot hand going from the indicator here to my hat, knowing that that's a hit and run. So right. uh, I think it's important to know your teammates. And just like you said, Rem, play the game and understand the situations. Yeah. Now, one more thing. Squeeze plays. Uh, I've had some of the weirdest signs for squeeze plays in my life. I mean, the first one I ever had on the Dick Williams was this. You know, and it, was, it came after an indicator, but it was just squeeze your neck. And, of course, your job on a squeeze play, no matter what your sign might be, is to walk up to the runner at third base to let him know that That's the squeeze right. is on. Is that correct? Yes, that is absolutely correct. And I like that to the neck because there are a bunch of different ways that you can decoy. If you have an indicator, like we showed earlier, our indicator today is the nose. You can always change your indicator so it allows that third base coach to de decoy. So if we use the squeeze as this, uh, it would follow the indicator. I could go left hand to my nose, which is not anything. Right. And then go here, which means nothing. I've got to be right hand to my indicator 
before I go to squeeze. a squeeze. Okay. I hope that clears things up a little bit. It's very, very complicated. It looks complicated, but when you really get into it and you have a good third base coach that can re that relays the signs in a, in a quiet, proper way, it's re really something players should not miss. So I hope that you learned a little bit something today about giving signs. You see it all the time at the ballpark, and we thought we'd break it down a little bit for you today. Thanks, Butter. Thank you, Rem.